This video is going to be a little bit different. I'll be teaching you guys 5 different ways to upgrade or modify your keyboard. This is mostly for the beginners, uh, for those who are newer to the hobby. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Today I'll be working with an $80 budget custom keyboard, but you can go ahead and do this on any of your pre-built keyboards. So let's start off by removing our keycap so we can work on our switches. First things first, we don't loop clicky switches, they lose their click. So tactile and linear are the ones you're going to be looping. Today I'll be looping an Echo CS switch, they are the rose red variant. So why do we loop switches? It basically gets rid of your scratchy noises or excess noise you don't want to hear. So first things first, we're going to remove all of our switches and start to open them up. There are many variants of keyboard loop out there but Crytox 205 grade 0 is the most used one for linear switches. So we're going to stick to that. So for a quick rundown of what you need, you're going to need a switch opener, a switch, your loop, and a brush. There are many switch pullers out there as well. Uh, there's 3D printed ones and aluminium ones, but I'll be using the aluminium one. When opening up a switch, you just want to apply force directly above the switch and it should just open up smoothly. A switch is mainly built out of 4 parts, the bottom housing, top housing, the stem, and the spring. When looping your brush, you do not need a lot of loop, you just need a very subtle amount of loop on the brush. What you want to do is just brush the bottom housing 3 times on both sides. Afterwards, you're going to want to do the exact same thing to your stem and make sure to get loop on every single side of your stem. You shouldn't be able to see a lot of lube on it, you should just be able to see a glossy finish on it. As for our spring, I just usually brush it at the top and bottom of the spring a few times until I see a nice glossy finish on it as well. Now that we're done, we can assemble the switch back together. Do take note that the orientations of each part needs to be correct, if not the switch wouldn't work. And there you go, you have successfully looped your first switch. Here's a quick sound comparison between an unlooped switch and a looped switch. Foam modding. This is one of the most simple mods you can do for your keyboard. Just grab a piece of foam, it can be from your packages, nothing special. It will just help remove your echo in your case and make it sound less hollow. So the first step is to, of course, open up your case so that you have the bottom and the top of your case. There are two main foams. One is called plate foam, one's called case foam. So usually we would add plate foam in between, but this one already has it. So this is a very simple process. All you need to do is just lay it on the bottom of your case, get the correct measurements, just add some snips at the correct places and proceed to cut the foam and you can throw it onto the bottom of your case.
super loop for this. It's basically a thicker loop compared to Crytox, so we're gonna need a generous amount of loop for this. We'll be looping the ends of the wire and make sure to loop past the 90 degree point. You'll see a thick and generous amount of loop evenly spreaded at the end. And now that we're done, we can start to put everything back together. We just need to pop the wire back and ensure that the wire is inserted correctly. You should be able to see it from the bottom and here's a sound comparison between looped and unlooped. Next up is keycaps. Good keycaps make a huge difference. So go get yourself a good set of keycaps and you'll definitely hear the difference. I have three different sets of keycaps here, you can hear the difference very clearly. So after all the modding, I'm going to be showing you guys a quick typing test and a quick sound comparison between before me modding the keyboard and after modding this keyboard. As for those who are wondering what this wheel does, it basically increases and decreases your volume and when you click it, it pauses and plays the video or the music that you are currently on. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to program it to do anything else, it's basically a volume increase, volume decrease and a pause and play button, so yeah, and it has a nice tactile bump to it. I forgot to showcase the lights on this keyboard in the previous video, so I'll be showing you guys a quick rundown of the different lights that are available on this keyboard. If you guys are not interested in this, you can go ahead and skip 30 seconds forward for the other stuff. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is more of a beginner's tutorial for those who want to get into the hobby so that many of you can fall into the rabbit hole with all of us. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like down below. It would mean a lot to me. And you can subscribe if you want. It's free. You can unsubscribe anytime. Uh, if you want to dislike the video, go ahead and dislike it. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next